Right, and with Warrington South MP David Mowat. Good to catch up again, David. Thanks, Gary. Last time we spoke, you were saying that you didn't expect to have any position in government, and no. then within a few days of our interview, you, you got a ministerial position. So the camera never lies, does it? <laughs> I, I can't forget anything. You're right. Uh, I was a bit surprised, um, but there it is. Yes, I was very pleased to be offered this new a job role in you, the government. This role you've got as Minister for Community Health and Care, what, what does it involve? Well, it's um, there's three ministers um, basically looking after the NHS under Jeremy Hunt and I'm one of them uh, and broadly what I do is uh, social care, GPs, all primary care, dentists, in fact it's, it's basically all the NHS except hospitals. Right, but you have some overview of what's going on with the hospitals well, as well. Well we're all sort of muck in as well yeah. because there's not that many of us but uh, basically my job, there's somebody else that looks after hospitals. Because at the moment we're hearing reports that uh, the accident and emergency unit at Warrington Hospital is under threat. Yes, well, I, I, there's all, you know, I've been the MP here for nearly seven years now. And even from before I started, we've been hearing reports about hospitals being under threat. And uh, the hospital has continued to thrive and it'll continue to do so. There does need to be changes. I'm not aware of anything particularly going on at Warrington Hospital at the moment. But, for example, we did change it a few years ago such that stroke um, people with strokes don't necessarily go to Warrington because there's better outcomes if they stay in an ambulance for a quarter of an hour longer and go to a different hospital. That sort of thing will always happen, but it needs to be clinically driven. Like I say, I'm not aware of anything in Warrington at the moment. Right. Turning our attention quickly to things that are going on globally around the world yes, at the moment. Yes, we have a new president. <laughs> well, we have the shock of Brexit, which uh, was a, has changed the face of this country at the moment and divided the nation. And now over in America, we've had Donald Trump. The whole face of politics seems to be changing. How do you adapt to that well, as an MP? I it's democracy, isn't it? I mean, I was surprised by Brexit. It's not what I voted for. Um, but it is what most people voted for, and the government need to need to deliver it now. And the, the problem with it is that there's many different versions of what Brexit is, and, and I think it's going to be hard to keep everybody happy, uh, but we'll see. I mean, we kept hearing the line in the early days from the Prime Minister that Brexit means Brexit, but does anyone really know what Brexit well, I, is going to be? I think what Brexit means Brexit is just a confirmation that we are going to be leaving the EU. There will be no more... Um, UK MPs, MEPs, and there will be no more Euro elections. But there's a many, many different shades of how we can leave, and we need to work that through now. And, and, and you know, we can't just advertise when you're in a negotiation exactly what we're doing and what we want, because as soon as we say what we want, that becomes the maximum that anybody offers us. Well, with the Brexit situation, though, I mean, we're still not very clear on whether MPs are going to have a say on whether the article is signed. Well, and what would happen if the MPs voted against it? Yes, I, there'd be a revolution is what would happen, frankly. The MPs, having had a, accepted the need for a referendum, voted six to one to have a referendum. We then have the referendum and then the MPs refuse to acknowledge it or even uh, implement it. Um, no, there would be that would cause massive distrust in politics. Well, I don't think that's what will happen. What might happen if there was a vote in Parliament is that MPs use that vote to amend what the government's negotiating position is, and that's why the government is wary about it. I don't think MPs would vote not to do Brexit. There would be The penalty would be too high for that. But we're still all, all in a period of uncertainty, which isn't good for the economy, no, is it? Well, yeah, no, but you know what? There's always uncertainty of some kind. And one of the good things that's happened from Brexit, which I, I always think is surprising we don't talk about more, is that the exchange rate has gone down 15%, which is good for manufacturing. It is good for the north, actually. It is good for around here. Um, and, and indeed, you know, when we talk about tariffs and all the rest of it, nobody is suggesting we have tariffs or very rare to have tariffs at that level. Um, but you're right, it is uncertain and it is difficult and we do need to work it through and get it fixed as soon as we can. And talking of uncertainty, Donald Trump, President of well, the USA. I would have, yeah, you could have got a long bet on that, couldn't you? And, uh, you know, people say he's won for the same reason that a lot of people voted for Brexit as well, a sort of feeling of a feeling of disillusionment with politics and politicians. And, and it is true that um, his opponent, 
Mrs Clinton was, was a very sort of conventional establishment politician. And, and uh, in hindsight, I think the Democrats could have picked somebody else. But there we are. Hindsight's a wonderful yep, thing. you're right. <laughs> anyway, closer to home, uh, one of the big issues on your patch at the moment is all the development that's going to be going on over in the south of Warrington in Grappon Hall Hayes area, yep. around a 1,000 new homes. Let's face it, the, the infrastructure of the roads at the moment just can't take all those extra well, I, I cars, I've can been, they? I've, I've, been on the, I've been quoted as that. I mean, there's, I think, 900 new houses being planned. Uh, it's hard to say they're a surprise because the land has been marked as reserved for development for a decade or more. Um, so it's very hard to argue that. But what is clear is that if it creates even worse traffic problems in Warrington than exists now, um, we need to be very, very careful what we're doing. And, and you know, I, I'm part of a government that wants to build more houses. We do need more houses in this country. I know there's always arguments about where they are, uh, but we do need more houses in this country because young people need more houses and it's just not acceptable um, that so many people are finding it unaffordable. But it has to be done right and we do have to have the infrastructure, like you said, um, to make that work and that means... They can't just build the houses without paying attention to the roads and how people are going to get perhaps to the motorways and also into Warrington. Part of it is the bridges, um, which we do need to continue to press uh, for delivery of. Well, I'll talk about the bridges in a moment, but going back to the Grappen Hall, Hazy Brown, we're talking about the roads and the infrastructure. I mean, where are the kids going to go to school? Well, I, we don't... The whole thing is a quite an early stage yet, and um, I was I opened a school up at Chapelford um, about a month ago now. I opened it, attended the opening of it uh, with the council leader uh, Terry O'Neill. And in fairness, they built that school in advance of the infrastructure. They built that school before the houses, um, and there's no reason why the council shouldn't get that right as well when we're doing that in the uh, in the south too. So it, it, I think voices need to be heard. We need to make sure people understand it's not just schools, it's doctor's surgeries and, and, and all the rest of it. And that does need to be in place um, before before the houses and, 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 of course, the roads do as well. Well, you, going back to the bridges now, um, <coughs> in the run-up to the election, there was quite a lot of noise, particularly from yourself, about uh, campaigning for Warrington. There would be no toll for the new toll bridge that's being built to, for local residents and that these new bridges would be set up to alleviate some of these traffic problems. There doesn't seem to be a lot of noise well, about I, them. No, and I, a lot well, I, funnily enough, I, I spoke to the council about these, both of them, in the last few weeks. I mean, they are both going ahead, the first one sooner than the other. Uh, I'm a little disappointed that I haven't seen people actually on the ground. I, I think I've, I've watched people surveying, and I think they've done some of the compulsory purchase work, uh, but things do take longer than you perhaps wish or hope sometimes. Um, but that bridge will make a difference. It'll, it'll bypass uh, Wilderspool, and that's a good thing to happen. Um, the bigger bridge, the high-level bridge, uh, was always due to start later. Uh, it's still proceeding, uh, and again, the, the compulsory purchases for that are ongoing. Um, and the opportunity, really, for that in particular is opening up a whole um, stack of land around there by the Mersey and around by Artley. It's really quite positive, and uh, you know, the government has committed the money, um, and it'll be the first major pieces of infrastructure in Warrington for a while, and we need them. And, and actually, the houses that you were talking about just now are another reason to get it done. And the toll situation? I mean, George Osborne's gone now. Well, George has it? gone, um, but I mean, that, that, that was a commitment that was made, and we are still trying to find a way to make it happen. But it's going to be a complicated process. It's more complicated it? than I had thought, frankly. Um, it's more complicated because we have some difficulty with other councils who say, well, if Warrington are going to get that, why don't we get it and and, and, uh, and all the rest of it. But we are trying to work that through. And I had discussions with a new Chancellor. Uh, both me and Graham Evans met with him about a month ago. So we'll, work is ongoing on that. So you're still working hard to ensure residents can have that toll free? I'm doing you? my very best. OK, David. Well, it's been great to catch up. Thank you for your time. And I look forward to seeing you again in the near future. Thanks, Gary.